Keeping your eyes on task and your mind on task may be the two most effective ways to reduce your risk of injury each day. At this point, Pete seems to understand this with most situations, especially those that are inherently dangerous. But it's some of the routine jobs that still seem to trip him up. Bye. Keeping your eyes on task is more than watching where you walk or drive or how you climb a ladder. The problem for Pete was that he forgot to look inside before he put his hand into the pail. More importantly, he didn't think that there might be something sharp inside. If he had thought about it, he would have checked it out first. For some people, it seems to take a serious injury or a close call to make them think about changing deliberate at-risk behavior. For instance, someone who totals a car while speeding may decide after that to drive more slowly. But if it was unintentional at-risk behavior that caused a serious injury, then it's not as simple as taking your foot off the gas. You might have to work on improving your habits, like keeping your eyes on the road or not changing lanes without looking first. Unfortunately, it wasn't until after an injury that I realized I didn't have the best habits with eyes on task and mind on task. And states like rushing or frustration were just increasing the problem. A while back, I spent my days rushing around the plant, always trying to do two things at once. But one day, I was over in our assembly area to check on a power distribution problem, and as usual, I got a call to head over to the other end of the plant immediately. As I was heading out, I was already thinking about the next project. Next thing I knew, I'm flat on my face. Now, I made one big mistake here. My mind was already on the next problem and not on where I was walking. I tripped and lost my balance. All because I was rushing on to the next thing, trying to do two things at once. Two weeks with my arm in a sling sure slowed me down. And it left me with a great reminder of the increased risk that comes from not keeping my eye on the ball and my mind on the game. But how about Pete? I wonder if that surprise he found in the bottom of the trash bin will be enough to start him working on his habits. Hey, Pete, can you help me move this filing cabinet? Yeah, sure, Mark. Just wait a minute and let me finish with this tile. So far, so good. Pete didn't let himself get distracted by Mark, and he kept his eye on the job. Hey, Mark. This tile cement, do you need to use gloves when you're working with it? Yeah, I always do. It's a good idea to have a respirator on, too. Huh. Score another point for Pete. He thought about the risk of exposing himself to a hazardous chemical and looked for a warning statement on using personal protective equipment. Seems like Pete's really getting the hang of it. Well, almost. The idea behind Safe Start is to prevent injuries. Analyze your own close calls or minor bumps and bruises. What were the mistakes or errors you made and why? In many cases, I think you'll find that you simply didn't have your mind or perhaps your eyes, or most likely both, on what you were doing. If a state was involved, like rushing, frustration, or fatigue, why didn't you pick it up? If it wasn't a state, then it's probably a habit you still need to improve. Keep watching other people for the patterns of states to errors that increase the risk of injury to increase your own awareness. Remember, it doesn't happen overnight. You've got to work at it. But when you think about the number of times you've been hurt, or almost hurt, when you weren't looking at what you were doing, or you weren't thinking about what you were doing, you realize it's worth the effort. In unit number three, you'll learn more about errors involving line of fire and the loss of balance, traction, or grip. However, learning about these hazards won't do you much good if you're not thinking about them, or you don't see them in the first place. So, until the next unit, Keep looking for the patterns of stage to errors that increase the risk of injury in other people. And analyze close calls and small bumps and bangs to figure out why you didn't see it or why you weren't thinking about it. See you then. <laughs>